issue in multifamilies, especially triple deckers. Uh, redundant here. So these are the, the, there's various uh, roofing uh, types that we'll find. Uh, there's a lot of uh, multifamilies that have a flat roof. When you have a flat roof, there's uh, there's various types of uh, things that you can do for a flat roof. Uh, but one of the major ones, the one that I like to see, is a, is, is a rubber roof. Um, it, it's very fairly easy to repair. Um, I like to see those. Uh, one of the things about uh, rubber uh, flat roofs, though, is over time they do tend to sag and they'll hold water. Uh, they'll hold water, they'll hold snow, and it's going to be very, very important to get that off of there because that's very, very heavy. Uh, roofs, we do have a fair amount of slate roofs still left. Uh, it's, it's not common in a lot of places uh, other, other than in, in Massachusetts. Um, the interesting thing about slate, the failure on a slate roof is not typically the, actually the slates themselves. It's the nails holding them in. So when you start, if you're looking at a roof system and you're seeing one, one nail is let go, it's usually the nails that are starting to let go. I have talked to people who do, uh, do repairs on slate roofs. Not every roofer knows how to work on slate. It's important to know. Uh, there are guys that, that, uh, that do uh, work on it. Usually they have gray hair. And for a good reason. It's because they're working on slate roofs. And it's not because they're old. No, 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 no. Uh, We also do, uh, there's a lot of asphalt. Um, some, uh, one, one interesting note about uh, asphalt roofs. A three-tab shingle, which is what you usually see this guy right here. Uh, that usually has a 25-year life, uh, 25 year lifespan on it. You know, each venue manufacturer is going to have their their own um, their you know their own guarantees on on the, on the materials. Uh, but the the architectural that we typically see today, and that's that's what you see here on the right hand side, that usually has a, like a 30, 35 year lifespan. It's worth the extra money to get those extra 10 years. And these these guys are tall. These guys are really really tall, 60 feet in the air. That's why people don't clean out their gutters. Um, that's why you're going to find a lot of these triple deckers don't have gutters, because now you get ice dams on this giant monster, and nobody wants to go up there and get the ice dams off. The exterior components. Uh, the exterior components. Uh, uh, I could go on all day long. All day long. These. Uh, you see, I usually see at least a little bit of damage on on these on these large multifamilies. It's usually like uh, you know. 40 windows at least on these on these guys um, you know and there's only so much we can see when we're down on the ground and the ladder doesn't go up that far and you don't bring the ladder all the way around the house so a lot of it is you're looking at it from the uh, uh, from the from the ground the one thing that is specific to these older houses and might be very interesting to you is the siding if it's a masonry product it could be asbestos so if it's if it's asbestos and you want to have it mitigated or you want to pull it off the house that can be that could be very very pricey so there's no way to know by looking at it i've tasted it and it doesn't taste any different than a regular siding uh you put a little ketchup on it, it's better but that's beside the poor stone foundation and this particular this one is not a field stone foundation yet you can see that crack and it's going this way that's the one that you don't want to see and that usually means we got hydrostatic pressure and it's putting on pushing on that wall or you had a machine going too close to the foundation something like that causing a crack like that those are the ones that you don't want to see um, it's one thing to note about especially if you're buying these triple triple deckers and we're talking about moisture 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 and you don't you don't want to have that hydrostatic pressure absolutely you don't want to have that hydrostatic pressure however these houses were built 100 years ago they didn't know anything about waterproofing back then they knew nothing about waterproofing every single one of these triple deckers is going to be moist in the basement there's things that you can do there's sump pumps dehumidifiers all those kind of things absolutely utilize them french drains going on and on and on and on uh those are in the basement it's coming through the wall and you've got a bowl in the wall you've got to crack it that's another thing altogether but a home inspector a good home inspector should be able to find it all right uh decks porches stairs i have I can count probably on both hands the number of times I've looked at a deck and said everything is perfect. There's usually something going on there. Um, I won't get into all of the stuff there, um, but the, the heights and stairs are all supposed to be the same. The railings are supposed to be there. The, you know, there's not supposed to wiggle, uh, that kind of stuff. Um, and these older houses, these things were poured in space, you know, poured in, in, in place. And you got one stair that's like this. You got a smaller one like this, and they're tripping hazards and everything like that. Very, very typical. Uh, for um, for the house, uh, uh, there's usually not a lot to talk about in the attic, but I will say this much: because we can't see the roof up really close, because it's usually so, up so high in the air, um, it's really really important for me to get up into those attic spaces. 
uh, and they tend to be pretty nasty, especially in these triple decas, because nobody's ever up there. Uh, the, the structure, don't be surprised if some of the, uh, some of the uh, these guys, these members, these, these are your rafters here, that, that there's bark still on them. Dude, they, they, they just chopped a tree down and put it up, and that was good enough. Um, and and, and uh, they put planking across the thing with spaces, all kinds of stuff like that. Uh, really old school construction. It's, it's, and uh, uh, we just want to make sure that there's no cracked rafters, that they, we don't have any sagging in the roof. One of the things that we don't want to see is what they call rafter spread, so we're looking for collar ties. You can see those cross members there. It looks like the cross member on. We also want to see that they're not rusted at the bottom. Uh, moisture, like I said, moisture is, is to be expected in these older multifamilies. Um, one of the indications, sometimes like the, you, you could have a flood two inches and, and then the water dissipates and then it's been dry for two months and then you can't see that there was any moisture. But what you can see is in the section over here in the middle, that's efflorescence that happens to be on block. Uh, but that efflorescence is an indication that moisture has come through the wall. It's taken some of that lime and some, uh, some other uh, minerals with it. And when it dries, it leaves it there, and that's that efflorescence. It's not necessarily not necessarily an indication that there's structural deficiencies at all. It's just me. It's an indication that moisture is in the basement. Oh, this is this is this is fun. This is good times. Um, these things are very specific to um, multifamilies, as we talked about. Now, the landlord panel is one that is really really specific to multifamilies. So, if you had a two unit, you would expect to have two panels, uh, two meters outside, and two panels inside. Or if you have a three family, you would expect to have C3, but that's not what you're actually supposed to have. You're supposed to have, if it's a, if it's a three family, you should have four panels. And one of them is the landlord panel. Any, um, any electrical for like, um, for lighting in the hallways, any exterior lights, that should be going on the landlord panel. Um, and sometimes we'll get to these things and they don't have a landlord panel. Or uh, another thing is that the, the wires are not designed to handle. I've, I've, I've gone into triple deckers that have are rated for 100 amps, and that is not even close to enough for a house that size with three families. Um, so, we'll, so one of the things that we're looking for is specifically is that landlord panel. If it's got a meter outside, then it's probably going to have its its own uh, panel on the inside, typically in the basement. Sometimes they're on the individual units, and sometimes there's sub panels. We won't get into this. Uh, I don't know how, how well you can see this, but uh, the wires are typically a fabricy looking thing. And the, the tubes are drilled, there's a hole drilled through the, the joists, um, and then they put these uh, the ceramic tubes in there to separate the wires from the, the wood so that there's no connection point. The ceramic is, is non-conductive, and that's why they use that. And then they have the tubes, I mean the, the knobs, and those are usually nailed in place, and it just holds those wires in place, uh, not typically through uh, the joists there. The, the issue with knob and tube wiring is when it was put in, it was designed to have a light bulb in each room. So back back in the day, you could turn a light on and you could read after dark. That was awesome, you know, and that, that, was, that was what it was designed for. Well, that's fine and well and everything is great. But now we have the 65 inch screen TV. We've got the sound system to go with it. Everybody's got an iPad and everything like this. We've got electric heaters and all of that kind of good stuff. It's of old school wiring that looks similar, but they're not the same. If you see BX wiring, it's the old metal cable. If you pull that out, it actually looks like the same. It's fabric sheathed and stuff like that. But you're really looking for those, those insulators, this, those ceramic insulators. Those are the guys there. Um, breakers will not trip. So if, if, it's, if a breaker is rated at 20 amps, It'll be 22 amps and it won't trip, 23 amps and it won't trip. And all that means is that those wires are going to get hot. And that's not what you want, okay, because that's a potential for fire, fire hazards. So they could be, you could have a Federal Pacific panel. It could look pristine, absolutely in pristine, uh, pristine condition, but it, it, they're not something that you, you, you'd want to have an electrician to look at. Uh, there's lots of stuff here. Uh, we're going to have you meet Uncle Frank, and Uncle Frank just loves messing with plumbing. He just... He just loves plumbing. Um, so you're going to see a lot of old school cast iron. Uh, typically what happens with the, the, the plumbing, these are waste lines, cast iron is waste lines. Typically with these lines, they've been in here for, for a long, long, long time. Underneath it, they can start getting corrosion blisters and stuff like that. That can be an indication um, that it's time to change that out. Now, I tell my customers, you don't have to chop out all of the cast iron. Well, you find the section that's, that's really damaged, chop out here, chop out here, and it can be changed out with some of the plastic pipes, ABS, PVC. Um, but of course, a plumber is going is to want to do that.
and then unconventional plumbing, and that's where Uncle Frank is involved. And Uncle Frank just absolutely loves to mess with plumbing. All he needs is a six pack, and he is good to go. Um, that's what he does. Uh, he does. He also does he does electrical work, and he does carpentry. He does all kinds of crazy stuff. Um, it had two heat units. You would have had one in the kitchen, and you would have had one in the parlor. It's a kitchen bar parlor setup. Classic, and that's that's the heat for that whole that whole floor. So that means all of the bedrooms didn't have heat. Inquiring today, we would we would have to have heat in each and every room. So there's a few few options that they they, they they can do is they can actually put a boiler in there. Sometimes if they do that, they'll actually have a boiler on that floor. Uh, the other thing they'll do is they'll just put in electric heat. If there's enough room in the electrical panel to do so, they'll put electric heat in those rooms and so on and so forth. So one of the things that we do have to look for is whether or not we have un, un, uh, what they call unconditioned rooms.